Warning. <coughs> <coughs> Greetings, fellow nerd. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of the Exotic Thermite series. In this episode, we'll be skipping right over the basics that were mentioned in episode one and getting right into the extractions. If you'd like to see what goes on into setting those things up, check the link in the doobly-doo. Engage your safety squints, and let's get started. In this episode, we will be doing extractions on two types of manganese oxide, tin oxide, black and green nickel oxide, two types of cobalt oxide, and an extra type of iron oxide that I didn't include in the last episode. After that, we'll try to make some ferromanganese and some nichrome alloys. The first element we're going to take a look at is manganese. Now, I won't be showing the small-scale preliminary tests I did before scaling up to the larger final reactions like I did in the first episode, but they are absolutely necessary to do in order to remain safe, but that is no guarantee of anything. Once again, do not try these at home. So the first one on the list is manganese dioxide, a black powder which is commonly used as a ceramic pigment or sometimes used as a catalyst in organic chemistry. The stoichiometric ratio used here is 2.42 to 1, and I used 25% of our cryolite to fluorospar mix as flux. Starting from the oxide and working the rest out from there, the ratio is 1,025 grams of the manganese to 423 grams of aluminum and 450 grams of the flux. As usual, a few grams of fumed silica was mixed in as an anti-caking additive. All of that was put into a flower pot with sand at the bottom and then taken outside. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Too much flux? I don't know. As usual, once everything cools down, we can break it open to see if it worked. And here we have 274.3 grams of some shiny and quite colorful manganese metal. For reacting so slowly, it was surprisingly successful. For those wondering where the rest of the yield went, most, if not all of it, did in fact reduce to metal, but the particles of manganese are extremely small and never got a chance to aggregate in the center. Next up is the manganese monoxide, or manganese oxide, a greenish-brown powder that finds its uses also as a ceramic pigment or as an additive supplement in animal feed. I'll spoil it now and say that yes, it was a miserable failure. Here's the closest thing to a complete reaction I have on video, and while it actually does go to completion, it doesn't get hot enough to coalesce the manganese into a blob. Now I could technically load it up with potassium perchlorate and get something out of it, but perchlorate is too precious to waste on that. Speaking of which, stay tuned for episode 3. Wink. Now I've been looking forward to this next part because we're going to be doing two of my personal favorite thermite reactions. Those two being cobalt monoxide and green nickel oxide. You'll see why I like these very shortly. 
First up is the cobalt 2 oxide, or cobalt monoxide, a blue-black powder that is heavily used as a ceramic pigment. Working from a stoichiometric ratio of 4.17 to 1, our equation will be 938 grams of the oxide to 225 grams of aluminum to 310 grams of flux, which is about 21% by total weight. That brings the total to 1473 grams, or 3 and a quarter pounds. Next we can get the nickel ready. Green nickel oxide is a non-surprisingly green powder that once again finds uses as a ceramic pigment. Starting with 448 grams of oxide and a 4.15 to 1 stoichiometric ratio, that means we'll need 108 grams of aluminum and 140 grams of flux, which will be about 20% by final weight. That brings the total to 696 grams, or 1.5 pounds. Let's take both outside and see what we get. You'll see as the slag stops glowing white hot why these two oxides are my favorite. As a byproduct of the extraction, some oxide will center together with the aluminum oxide in the slag and form cobalt slash nickel aluminate. If you're wondering why the cobalt looks familiar, that's because it's the same pigment used to tint glass bottles blue. Anyway, now that they've cooled off and I've stared at them long enough, we can break them open. There's really not much to say about the nickel besides the color. Reacted, compacted, and extracted 255.4 grams of metal with no real issue. No issue, at least, compared to the blue-colored rabbit hole next to it. So about that. What happened? Is it even cobalt monoxide? Well, judging by the color of the slag and the fact that the reaction did complete, just not enough to make one piece of metal, we could say it's definitely an oxide of cobalt. Which one is it, though? Well, since there are really only two commercially available oxides of cobalt, and since it must not be the monoxide, my guess it was sold as a partially hydrated cobalt 2-3 oxide. But as usual, that's complete speculation. But because I was determined to have both reactions turn their colors at the same time in one single camera shot, I ordered another kilo of the same cobalt, and what a surprise, it was the same barely reactive cobalt oxide. So I did what anyone else in my situation would have done. I filled it with more aluminum and tried different oxidizers to brute force some of it out. First I tried different ratios of potassium nitrate with no results. Then I moved up a level and added different ratios of potassium perchlorate all the way up to a 1 to 1 oxide to oxidizer ratio. Still with only a whiff of success. I didn't want to buy more of the same oxide like last time, but I couldn't find anyone else that wasn't selling the stuff at $90 a pound. I did get a little discouraged, and I set the cobalt aside while I filmed other reactions in the meantime. That was, until I found an eBay seller who had green nickel oxide, red copper oxide, and cobalt monoxide for sale at a fifth of the price that I paid previous. I couldn't resist, of course, and soon almost ten more pounds of various metal oxides was in my mailbox. I mixed up some small tests and saw the color change I was looking for on both slags, so I scaled them up. We're not done yet, though, unfortunately. So, for our second try, we have again cobalt monoxide and nickel monoxide. You may notice the color of the cobalt this time is bluer and the nickel darker. Keep that in mind. So for the cobalt, the ratio will be 707 grams of the oxide to 170 grams of the aluminum to 223 grams of the flux, bringing the total to 1100 grams or 2.4 pounds. And the ratio for the nickel is 953 grams to 230 grams to 200 grams bringing the total to 1,383 grams, or 3 pounds. Let's see if this will be the one. Oh. 
How about that? One let the other. And they didn't break. Worked perfectly. Now to just wait for it to cool... Wait a minute, where's the color? The spatters are pigmented, but not the main slag. Oh, well, all is not lost. Let's break them open. Now I'm not exactly sure why the colors on the surface of the slag were different from the inside, but it seemed to work just fine. I'll include some close-ups of the slag, some crystals that grew, and the metal that was extracted from them. The weight of the cobalt came to 322 grams, and the nickel came out at 655 grams. And if you look, the dark blue crystals that are in the cobalt slag are actually cobalt aluminate that grew in the voids as it cooled. Okay, now back to the science. Sorry, I needed that after that headache of an extraction. There's one beautiful cobalt extraction coming up, but I think it'd be a good idea to get the color blue off the screen for at least one reaction. So next, we're gonna take a look at a partially hydrated iron oxide called ochre. You may have already guessed, yes, it is a ceramic pigment. And yes, if you watch the first episode, it will be similar to the yellow iron oxide. Here is my formula, although there was no iron to recover from it. Let's take it outside. Yep, definitely water in there. Spongy with flames, as expected, I guess. Now that we're done with the detours, we can move on to the final cobalt extraction. This is the one I was hoping to get. So, starting again with a 4.17 to 1 ratio, the formula is 893 to 215 to 280 grams, the flux being about 20% by weight, bringing the total to 1,388 grams, or 3 pounds. Now I'm going to leave in a little more of the cooldown on this one, but trust me, it's worth it. So let's mix it up and take it outside. Well, that was a mess. It's going to be a colorful mess. Oh, 
Look at that blue. Alrighty. That's a sign it worked. Beautiful as it is on its own, it's not what we came here for. Let's see if there's anything inside. On a side note, it was starting to get dark, so I couldn't wait to let it cool down on their own, but they were still a bit too hot. I figured it was cooled enough that the crystal growth had ceased, so I ran some water over it. So for the ochre iron, as expected, there was no metal aggregation, but there were a few pieces that were at the bottom and heavier than the rest. If you left those out, they probably would rust. The cobalt, on the other hand, worked great, weighing in at 425 grams. And because I had to wet the slag to cool it down, the shine wasn't as nice, so I dried them off and got better shots inside. Again, we can see plenty of crystal growth in the voids of the slag. I may collect these crystals from all the cobalt slag I've made so far and do something with it, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, cobalt is toxic, so even though we are basically making rocks, you can't just throw it out. It would technically be considered, though, a high-grade cobalt aluminum ore. Just not much of it. This episode is becoming much longer than expected, but we're going to push on through with the rest. So next we'll change things up and take a look at some tin dioxide or stannic oxide, a white powder with a variety of uses from glazes to glass coatings and finds use as a polishing powder for glass and silver. Starting with a stoichiometric ratio of 4.19 to 1 and 1000 grams of oxide, we get a formula like you see here. The total is 1700 grams or 3 and 3 quarter pounds, with the flux being about 27% by total weight. Let's see what happens.
Well, it seemed to work great so far. For some reason, though, this time I decided it would be easier to break it open on dirt, and then I decided to cool it off with water. And I really didn't accomplish much except making mud, so I washed up and I got a better shot inside along with some tin I remelted into a bar from a previous extraction. The total weight came to 603 grams. I do plan on remelting this tin I made, but I have one more to do later, so I'll save it for a future video. All that's left now before we get into the alloys is one final nickel extraction on an oxide called black nickel oxide, or nickel 3 oxide, a black powder that doesn't find much use outside its employment as, once again, a ceramic pigment. A similar compound, however, nickel oxide hydroxide, is used in nickel hydride batteries. Starting with a stoichiometric ratio of 3.06 to 1, and 500 grams of the oxide, we get a formula like you see here. And I found that a ten, about a 10% flux ratio by total weight worked fine, but I think that can be tuned in just a little bit better for future extractions. The total came to 739 grams, or just over 1.5 pounds. Let's do it. You can see as it cools down, the aqua color associated with the green nickel doesn't really form, at least not in large quantities. There are some traces of it on the slag and on the metal itself. The weight of the extracted nickel came to 294 grams. Alright then, now that a few more of the basics are out of the way for this episode, let's try to make some alloys. And the first one we'll try to make is high carbon ferromanganese, a hard but brittle alloy that doesn't find too much use outside of industry. Now the exact ratio of elements isn't too crucial here, as we are making it with thermite, but I'll be shooting for a 7613 7.5 manganese iron carbon ratio, with a few grams of cabosil to provide the silicon content. So with all that in mind, we can do some quick math, and here I have the formula shown. Working from 600 grams of manganese dioxide, the rest of the weights will be 96 grams of black iron oxide, 60 grams of carbon, in this case graphite, and a stoichiometric quantity of aluminum for both oxides. From there, based on the reactivity of both manganese dioxide and black iron oxide performed individually, we can guess at how vigorous the alloy's reaction will be. I estimate it needing around 18% flux, so we'll mix it up and take it outside. Other than needing more flux, I'd say it turned out pretty well for my first try. It has a different shine than either manganese or iron, so I mean we must have done something right. The total extracted weight came to 208 grams. A lot of the metal was visible in the slag, but ultimately unrecoverable. All that's left on our list now is to make nichrome. 
an almost indispensable alloy usually extruded as a wire for use in heating elements, electric matches, and the like. For this one, since the ratio of nickel to chromium isn't super necessary, I didn't find the element percentages by weight and instead just mix the oxides in an 80 to 20 ratio. 500 grams of chrome oxide mixed with 125 grams of black nickel oxide and a stoichiometric quantity of aluminum for both. No flux was added as I thought the chromium would slow the reaction down sufficiently enough. Let's take it outside. No flux by the way. Look at how bright that is. That's nichrome, alright. Wow. How big? The camera definitely didn't do it justice, but that was pretty damn bright. I mean, it makes sense because it is nichrome. We did manage to recover about 184 grams of metal, but next time flux must definitely be used. Hmm. Well then, I guess that brings us to the end of the episode. In the third episode, we're going to be looking at thermites that need a little extra chemical push to reduce the oxide to metal, like titanium, zirconium, silicon, and of course, much more. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. No, can't use that one. Uh, still need an outro.